Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzam. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 23rd of September. India China agree not to send more troops to line of actual control. US envoy Khalil Zad says Afghans will suffer if Doha peace stocks fail. And job scars in Bangladesh as COVID 19 restrictions remain. And now for all the details. India and China have agreed to stop sending more troops to their de facto border line of actual control in the western Himalayan region of Ladakh and to avoid any actions that might complicate the tense situation there. Both the countries in a joint statement said they have agreed to refrain from unilaterally changing the situation on the ground. India and China have agreed to stop sending more troops to the de facto border line of actual control in the western Himalayan region of Ladakh and to avoid any actions that might complicate the tense situation there. A joint press release issued by the Indian government in New Delhi said both sides had agreed to avoid misunderstandings and misjudgments and refrain from unilaterally changing the situation on the ground. This came after senior military officials from both the countries met earlier this week. Thousands of Indian and Chinese troops are currently amassed along the border in Ladakh, a move triggered by standoffs that began in May and escalated in June into a hand-to-hand -hand combat in which 20 Indian soldiers were killed. This time is very hot for China. So it would be better to lie low, talk of peace, talk of tranquility and China is scared that if additional troops are mustered and mobilized by Indian army then the aim is very clear. Meanwhile residents of Leh city in India's Union territory of Ladakh on Wednesday expressed relief over the announcement and said the step was necessary to ensure peace prevails in the cold desert region. Amid the border standoffs, both countries had said they were attempting to resolve the situation through diplomatic and military channels, but talks appear to have made little headway so far. The death toll in building collapse in Bivandi city of India's western Maharashtra state rose to at least 39 on Wednesday. As many as 25 people have been rescued so far. Rescue workers battle rain and cramp conditions to score through rubble and look for possible survivors. The three-storied building collapsed on Monday and teams from the NDRF Fire Brigade and police reached the spot and carried out rescue operations. The owner of the building has been booked for culpable homicide and negligence, causing hurt and is still absconding. Meanwhile, normal life has been disrupted in Mumbai due to severe waterlogging following heavy rainfall. Rail and road movement was severely hit at several places, forcing civic body BMC to declare a holiday for all private and government establishments except emergency services. According to Weather Department, Mumbai is expected to receive moderate rain till September 28. Moving on, Pakistani human rights activist Anila Gulzar has said that Pakistan is no more a safe place for religious minorities to live. While attending the UNHRC session in Geneva this week, she highlighted forced conversion of girls from minority communities in Pakistan and misuse of blasphemy laws. Pakistani human rights activist Anila Gulzar, while attending the 45th UNHRC session in Geneva this week, said, Pakistan is no more a safe place for religious minorities to live. She highlighted forceful conversion of girls from minority Hindu, Sikh and Christian communities in Pakistan and also condemned judicial system in the country over the recent case of 37-year-old Christian man named Asif Parvez, 
who was sentenced to death last week on blasphemy charges in a trial that ran since 2013. Asif Parvez, a garment factory worker, was accused by his supervisor of sending derogatory remarks about the Muslim prophet Muhammad to him in a text message. Parvez told the court the accusation was made only after he had refused to convert to Islam. Uh, Asif Parvez ko ब्लेस फैमिली लॉ के अंदर उन्होंने अरेस्ट करवाया और आज वो उसको पिछले हफ्ते सजाए मौत सुना दी गई है हिंदू सिख और क्रिश्चियन जितनी भी माइनॉरिटीज पाकिस्तान में हैं उनके रहने के लिए जगह इतनी तंग कर दी गई है कि वो इस वक्त सफर कर रहे हैं मीन वाइल ऑन ट्यूजडे सिख ग्रुप्स इन इंडिया टुक टू दी स्ट्रीट इन प्रोटेस्टेड नियर दी पाकिस्तान हाई कमीशन इन न्यू डेली over alleged kidnapping of a minor sikh girl in pakistan bulbul kaur a 17 year old daughter of a priest at panja sahib sikh shrine in pakistan was allegedly abducted by two men 15 days ago she was later traced by police only after the indian foreign ministry intervened in the matter the protesters demanded international communities attention to such frequent cases of abductions and forced conversion of girls from minority communities in Pakistan The Islamabad High Court on Tuesday said the onus was on Pakistan's federal government to bring back former premier Nawaz Sharif from London to stand a trial in corruption cases against him in Pakistan The Islamabad High Court or IHC on Tuesday said that the Pakistan's federal government was responsible for bringing back former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif from London to stand a trial in the country. Leader of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party Nawaz Sharif, a convict in Avonfield corruption reference, has been living in London since November last year after the Lahore High Court granted him an 8-week bail in 2019 for treatment due to his deteriorating health condition. The Islamabad High Court had on September 15 issued non-bailable arrest warrants for Sharif who has failed to surrender despite warnings by the bench. On Tuesday, Additional Attorney General on behalf of the state informed the court that Pakistan High Commission in the UK had sent an arrest warrant to Sharif which was received by Sharif's son Hassan Nawaz. However, Sharif's party and lawyer have said that he was getting treatment for various medical complications and would return only if allowed by doctors moving on united states special envoy zalmi khalilzad has said the us will protect its interest in all circumstances in afghanistan and that the afghan people will suffer if there is no peace settlement the remarks by the envoy comes at a time when intra afghan talks to discuss peace in afghanistan are being held in doha The United States Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad on Tuesday testified before the US House Oversight and Reform Subcommittee on National Security about Washington's Afghanistan policy and said the US will protect its interest in all circumstances in Afghanistan and that the Afghan people will suffer if there is no peace settlement. Thank you very much. Khalilzad asserted the reduction in US troops does not mean the US forces cannot carry out their mission in Afghanistan. He added a re-evaluation will be necessary when troops get down to 4000 to 5000. The remarks by the US envoy comes amid ongoing negotiations in Qatar's capital Doha that have made slow progress over the last 10 days despite meetings between the contact groups of the Afghan government and the Taliban. The talks are an Afghan led and Afghan owned process where two warring sides are negotiating. a road map for the future of their country the afghans are yearning for peace and there is overwhelming support among them for these talks and for a political settlement the two warring sides of afghanistan are discussing 20 article rules and regulations for the peace negotiations the contact groups are expected to hold more meetings this week to finalize the procedure and then work on the agenda for the talks In news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's former president Maithripala Sirisena and former prime minister Ranil Wickremesinghe have been summoned before the presidential panel probing the Easter Sunday attacks for giving their testimonies on the deadly terror strikes. The panel was appointed by Sirisena. 
The presidential panel probing the Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka has summoned former President Maithripala Sirisena and former Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe for giving their testimonies on the deadly terror strikes. While Sirisena is scheduled to appear before the Commission on October 5, Vikrame Singhe will testify before the panel on October 6, the officials said on Tuesday. The previous government headed by Siri Sena and Vikram Singhe was blamed for its inability to prevent the attacks despite prior intelligence made available on the impending attack. Sri Lanka was rocked by a series of deadly blasts on April 21, 2019 in and around the capital Colombo as large groups gathered at churches for Easter. More than 250 people including 11 Indians were killed in the attack. Meanwhile, Former Defence Secretary Hema Sri Fernando, while testifying before the Commission on Monday, accused the then Head of State Intelligence Services Nilantha Jayawardene for negligence of duty. Fernando said Jayawardene was acting closely with Sri Sena. Sri Sena's media office rubbished all accusations of Fernando. Fernando was arrested and jailed alongside the then Police Chief Puji Jayawardene for criminal negligence over their inaction to prevent the attacks. despite the availability of prior intelligence moving on to news from bangladesh as corona virus cases across the populous bangladesh continue to rise unemployment is making the situation worse for daily wage workers and many others people with no source of income are switching their professions and preferring to leave the expensive city lives and heading back to their villages Groups of people gathering on the streets of Bangladeshi capital Dhaka is a common sight in some parts of the city these days as men wait with tools in hands to be hired as they queue in sneaking lines for free food handouts with social distancing restrictions and worries over the corona virus pandemic economy has slowed down drastically in Bangladesh sending more jobless people out into the streets every day and hungry people to mosque and other institutions for free meals log jo na hai na kam kam mein mostly bol lega ek ko na karne asla mein kam pe na na kha sakte hai around 80% of bangladesh exports are from the garment sector which used to employ 4 million people mostly of whom are women millions of dollars worth of orders have now been cancelled as shops around the world shut down and factories lie idle as many employees were let go in march when lockdowns were put in place bangladesh has reported 352178 corona virus cases with 5007 deaths associated to the infection menstruation and menstrual practices still face many social cultural and religious restrictions which are a big barrier in the path of menstrual hygiene management In a bid to promote menstrual hygiene, a restaurant in Western India has set up a sanitary pad vending machine for women. A restaurant in India's western Surat city has set up a sanitary pad vending machine for women in a bid to promote menstrual hygiene. Taking inspiration from Bollywood film based on a manufacturer of low-cost sanitary pads, Padman. The restaurant owner took the step after seeing the kinds of problems women face due to non-availability of pads. Signboards have been on the main and washroom gate about sanitary pads being available at the restaurant. We have also written on the main door and washroom. So, whoever needs a lady, we will give her a coin for five rupees. We will take a five rupees coin, token coin. अंदर वॉशरूम के अंदर जो वेंडिंग मशीन लगा है उसके अंदर एक रेड बटन है वो प्रेस करेंगे कॉइन इंसर्ट करेंगे तो ऑटोमेटिकली हाइजीनिकली पैड अपने आप बाहर आ जाएगा और वो लोग यूज कर सकते हो एनी कस्टमर कमिंग टू द रेस्टोरेंट और वुमेन पासिंग बाय कैन कम एंड कलेक्ट सैनिटरी पैड फॉर द यूज फ्रॉम द वेंडिंग मशीन ये एक बहुत ही अच्छा इनिशिएटिव है क्योंकि यहाँ पे जैसे आज के टाइम पे लोग पीरियड्स की बातें करने के लिए इतना हिचकिचाते हैं तो इस टाइम पे इनके जो इनका जो ये इनिशिएटिव है बहुत ही अलग और बहुत बोल्ड इनिशिएटिव है फॉर मेनी इंडियन वीमेन स्पेशली एडोलेशन गर्ल्स मैंसुरेशन इज शेमफुल एंड अनकम्फर्टेबल फ्रॉम बींग बार फ्रॉम रिलीजियस श्राइंस टू डाइटरी रेस्ट्रिक्शन टू अ लैक ऑफ टॉयलेट्स एंड सैनिटरी प्रोडक्ट्स 
they face many challenges when they have their periods camp in Irsi. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.